This is Felipe Hoffa. He's the data cloud advocate for Snowflake and he just revealed to me all of the secrets of Streamlit inside Snowflake. Ha 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 Disclaimer. Hello data fans, I'm Fanil. Last week I attended the big data and AI event in Paris. I love Paris. Look. It's best weather ever. It was two days of networking and listening to sales speech around data preparation, data management, cloud data layout, machine learning, and woof, it was exhausting. Turns out most of the discussion I had were a good illustration of the Gartner hype cycle for data management 2022. It's like Gartner people know the future more than we do. But hey, why would I be interested in data management if I'm doing the best trimly tips, right? I mean, what's at stake is only how you're going to store and analyze data in the coming three to five years. I think it's important even if you're a data scientist to keep an eye on what's happening around you in the ecosystem. Like there's a whole world outside of data science. That got me thinking a lot about Streamlit and Snowflake and Databricks and other cloud providers. And I wanted to dump my thoughts about it in a video. Now, before talking about Streamlit, there's a thing I noticed about this event like immediately. We are low code, no code. And I mean, I get it, I'm all in for providing a way for business stakeholders and non-data analysts to transform the data and manipulate it in the cloud. It's just my developer feelings, they feel attacked. But there was a sentence that was pronounced even more often than low code, no code by those data integration companies. And this is no joke, this video is not sponsored. First thing they say to me, we have a Snowflake connector. You didn't even ask me if I'm using Snowflake and the first thing you say is, we have a Snowflake connector. Everybody has got Snowflake. And then I asked those people what they think is the future of data and one third of them answer me, the future of data is in the cloud. And they may be a little biased, you know, they are selling tools for migrating data from one cloud to another. <laughs> so <laughs> do have a feeling that we're heading into this kind of market where your future company has a big chance of being inside Snowflake or Databricks. Snowflake versus Databricks. Snowflake cupcakes, this is my only lunch. If you're like me and you're not really following the cloud data lakehouse ecosystem because you're storing and analyzing data on on-premise systems, well, just know that there's a gigantic battle that is coming soon for the control of our data in the company. And so far, it seems it's been pretty much of an even battle between those two. On the storage side, it's Apache Iceberg versus Delta Lake for Snowflake and Databricks. And on the compute side, they're both battling with their SQL engine that are working pretty well in a distributed manner for data warehousing. And because they need a tiebreaker, they're coming for us, the data scientists and data analysts. They want to provide the best tooling to do advanced analytics on the data and then share this to others. Now, Databricks is already on the unified big data analytics side of the spectrum. So they've already got their Spark and Spark SQL, Spark ML Lib, Databricks Notebook and ML Flow. They are covered, okay? Now on the other side of the battle, we've got Snowflake, who has only been promoting Snowpark since very recently. Now Snowpark is kinda like the PySpark data frames. So if you want to manipulate data on Snowflake with Python, you use Snowpark. But there may still be missing an interactive analytics user interface to explore and share the insights on the data. Do you remember what they did six months ago? I have no clue, I have no insider trade secret on how Snowflake wants to use Streamlit in its strategy to dominate the world of data. At this point, this is pure speculation and if I knew anything, I would probably be rich. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of my hot takes. I've personally never thought of Dash nor Panel as Streamlit true competitors. I use Streamlit as a tool to creatively explore data or test Python libraries and then share my insights to other people by deploying to the cloud. I don't use Streamlit as a tool to create advanced BI reporting capabilities 
with custom layouts and callbacks mechanism where when I edit this slider, it edits this plot only and not the rest. To be honest, when I'm creatively exploring the data, I don't want to deal with reactive programming nor layouts, and my tutorials are very indicative of how I work with Streamlit. And I'm not the only person to do that, actually the founder of Streamlit works in that way too. In this regard, the two closest competitors to Streamlit would be IP widgets in Jupyter Notebooks and Gradio. If you go back to Streamlit's origin story, Streamlit is actually seen as a way for exploratory data analysis and interactive user interfaces. One was especially from Talgo and Adrian, they, they knew that they didn't have kind of the coding tools that they wanted. They're very good developers. They're, they're used to using state-of-the-art things. They said, I want to stay in code, but I also want to be able to live visualize and change and do things with that. So it makes sense for me to consider Streamlit as a competitor to Databricks Notebooks. And this is good news if we consider that Streamlit is going to take the same path as Databricks Notebook. That means there will be a strong integration of Streamlit inside Snowflake, but most of the new features will probably trickle down to the open source version of Streamlit. And the same way that Databricks try to attract Jupyter Notebook people into their Databricks notebook platform, we'll probably see Snowflake try to attract the Streamlit community onto its Snowflake platform. So they want the open source version to be almost on par with their paid enterprise version. For this reason, I'm not really scared of Streamlit open source future. And you can see they are trying to hire more project managers for the open source part. I want to talk a bit about Gradio. Gradio has been bought by Hugging Face. They're slowly shaping to be the user interface for all open source Hugging Face models in the hub. And if you slowly build the Hugging Face hub and spaces and data sets into the largest marketplace for open source machine learning models and apps, well, you got yourself a massive opportunity. I don't know if that's the official vision for Hugging Face, but if it is, it, it is a grand vision. And listen, Snowflake also has an app marketplace. Actually, AWS, GCP, and Azure do too. But can we imagine? having a Streamlit marketplace in the future? Would it be a, more of a private business marketplace like the AWS one? Or would it be more on the open source side like Gradio and Hugging Face? Or maybe on the Streamlit community cloud version? I don't know. Those are very strategic top level questions and those take months of roadmap to be answered. So if we have hints of it, we'll probably have some in the build conference that is coming soon and maybe in the coming months. But I do expect those things to happen. <laughs> so yeah, we are heading probably towards a data web apps marketplace. So if you're learning uh, Jupyter Notebooks, Gradio and Streamlit, you are all covered. I'm not a gardener guy, so I don't predict the future. Let me know your thoughts about it in the comments. I would love to read about uh, what you think is the future for data web apps in the cloud. And I'll see you around. Bye. Do you appreciate the change of scenery? The forest.